hi people welcome back to my channel yeah if you're very passionate about m1e and looking to stay updated about the monitoring evolution foods you're welcome to this channel this is where i cover practical monitoring and evolution and uh project planning and management concepts uh so in this video we're going to look at a very hot uh, training topic in uh, how you can make waves with the m1e field so let's just dive into it right now so yeah uh in uh, our video today we're going to look at key trends in monitoring and evolution that will help you stay ahead of the curve and uh one we have um uh, one key trend in monitoring evolution that is really occurring and really a uh, hot hot sauce right now is uh, data science and M&A. As an M&A professional, you need to be able to integrate data science with the monitoring, exploring big data, leveraging uh, advanced data analytics, machine learning. We have AI, which is buzzing right now. And these all these tools can help you get deeper insights into your data can uh, leverage very many technologies in uh, predicting trends, identifying data, uh, uh, identifying patterns in your data and making uh, data driven decisions and very good visions. Some of uh, the uh, data science or AI learning uh, machine language you can use, there is Galileo AI, there is ChatGPT, all these tools you can use to leverage your data science in M1E. And then we have real-time monitoring. As I mentioned earlier, I've mentioned in one of the videos that we can do real-time monitoring and this can greatly transform your projects. And some of the tools you can use are in real-time monitoring and tracking progress and uh, making adjustments instant instantly or, or uh, measuring performance instantly. You can use tools like Kobo, you can use ODK. These are very popular tools for real-time data collection and analysis and then they provide feedback and quick adjustments also some of the web-based systems you can use in your m1e are we have web is there we have logoto we have activity info all these tools are there to help you in your real-time monitoring uh then we have another our uh, approach or key thing you should check to check to stay ahead of the curve trends and m1a you have the participatory approach which i've also mentioned so many times you involving your beneficiaries and stakeholders in the project evolution process uh, this approach not only enhances transparency in your project but also ensures there is insights and feedback and many donors want to see that that there is a a, a compliance a feedback mechanism in your projects and uh, we can get uh, insights or feedback on the project or program from the beneficiaries or affected persons and then there is transparency in what they have to receive from the project and what they all know they all to be delivered to so it's also a very good approach you have to adapt in your monitoring and evaluation and then we look at uh, uh fourthly we have the impact evaluation and the random control trials which is a very another training training topic uh, in M1E. Uh, when you look at London random control trials, these are the standard for evaluating casual effects of inter interventions when you want to uh, evaluate a counterfactual vis-a-vis -vis the, the treatment groups. You can use the randomized control trials and they give you robust evidence on what has worked, what has not worked, what has worked so that you can scale it up in terms of programming, in terms of approaches, you can use the randomized control priors. For example, you can say that if I've given this uh, uh, project area, this intervention, I'm comparing the one which has been given this intervention, maybe, for example, you can say in climate smart agriculture, it has done some good agriculture and one which has not, and uh, that adapted some practices. We compare the two groups, how far are they, which is doing better, and after, can if we see success, can we document that? Can we scale these approaches? We can use the randomized country trials in our evaluation. Then we have a sustainability and long-term impact, which is another fourth 
approach we have to adapt in our uh, M&A that uh, whenever you're doing M&A, you look at sustainability and long-term impact evaluations that we have to look beyond outcomes to assess how projects are contributing to the lasting change. Uh, even though when you're, you're when you're doing your evaluation and uh, maybe you're doing monitoring visits and then you're assessing how far you are in tracking the project uh, indicator targets or yeah, upper firmness, you should look at the long term impacts of the project and also assess outcomes or indicator targets that hope you contribute to this long lasting impact because we are moving away from just uh, interventions being able to provide uh, resources for just a short term and then uh, when uh, the donors leave the beneficiaries are left crippled so we're looking at development of the beneficiaries that even when you're implementing a program even when advise, advising an M&A advisor or a, a program personnel you design a program that there are some indicators you're going to put to address interventions you're going to put to address so that you can see that there is sustainability and long-term impact of the programs even when burning has exited uh then uh at six we uh look at uh, the use of gs spatial data every another uh increasingly used tool in m e to provide insights into project impacts geographically uh, this can allow you to map your data and visualize your data um, to identify geographic patterns and disparities in your projects. Outcomes. Yeah, so you can use tools like uh, Logarito, like it does that. Yeah, the geospatial data, like Inbuilt. Uh, the other many, you can use GISS, GIS sorry, to actually um, um, analyze it at a quantity geographical location and you see uh, how maybe the interve your intervention, your monitoring or, or implementing is doing in the different uh, geographical locations. You can see if you have a project in, uh, uh, let's say, the Western region and in like five districts, you see that there is a difference in how uh, this project can be improving lives in the different uh districts so you can use your special data to show and visualize how there is the different impact in terms of uh maybe uh people reached in this area in terms of uh uh um, maybe according to your intervention maybe farmer groups in this area so you can use your special data then uh, we have uh, in uh lastly is Capacity building in M&A, this remains a very crucial area as an M&A expert, I'm a professional, a specialist, or advisor, or manager. It's very good for you to empower your local M&A professionals in a team, either your assistants, if they don't know anything, to empowering, whether in workshops, online courses, mentorship, also, it's also good for you to keep on improving and evolving as an MIE professional learn. There's so many tools out there online to learn, so much knowledge to learn, to improve and stay updated and research about the MIE field. So that's it from me today. Uh, that's it on some of the hottest trends right now in monitoring evaluation space. Staying updated in the M and E space, keep updated in the M and E space, and enhance your start your understanding of M and E. And that's it. Thank you very much. Like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.